Hey YouTubers, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching another cool video on working on our air and snowblower. In this video, step-by-step -step process on how to install heated hand grips. Let's go out to the snowblower and get started. All right, YouTubers outside at the snowblower, got the box down there on the ground. Let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look at the instruction manual. After opening up the box, take out all your parts. You've got your wiring and harness, you've got your heated grips, and you've got a bag full of stuff, including your switch there. And the instruction sheet, verify all your parts are present. What I recommend, and the instruction manual recommends, do not do this project until you've waited three hours minimum with the engine in the off configuration, and that is to alleviate any burns on your skin while you work through this project. In our case, it's been off for a couple weeks because it has not snowed in a few weeks. So what we're going to do, jump right into the removal step, remove wire harness, stop engine and remove key. We'll do that here shortly. Wait for moving parts to stop and hot parts to cool. That does not apply to us. Disconnect spark plug wire. Notice how it does not say disconnect the entire plug, just the wire. So come up to the actual snow blower. Key is out, set that aside. And on the side is your spark plug wire connection. So you carefully pull that out. Inside there is your spark plug. Step two, disconnect wire harness from headlight. And as you know, the headlights on the front portion of your control panel come down below and your electrical connection point is right here. I've already loosened up the actual tabs that lock that clip or connection point in place. This little pick tool from our local AutoZone, what I did was grab the bottom portion of this tab here and apply downward pressure and at the same time I use my other hand to lift the upper tab and these actual clips you have to pull up over the actual clips here. There's two little prongs, one on top, one on bottom and they lock in place in these little clips here. Be very careful, you don't want to break them. Step three, cut wire harness ties off the handlebar, pull push pin out of engine anchor and disconnect wire harness from engine. Figure three, that's all of this. To the back of the snowblower once again, and we do not actually have a push pin in our engine anchor. Grab this cool little tool. Let's go ahead and snip the tie straps. And be very careful as you snip this one. You do not want to snip anything you're not supposed to snip. And there is a push clip in the actual lock there and all we did was grab a pair of pliers and remove that from here i've already loosened this electrical connection point you'll need both hands don't tug on this portion that's the wiring that actually goes into the block and now that we're disconnected what we'll do is just carefully feed this electrical wiring harness out and away back to the instructions completed step three Step four, depending on control panel A or B, whichever one you have will depend on which instructions you go. We have control panel A. Number one, drill a half inch hole in the control panel in area indicated. And it wants us to drill basically right there. And important, before drilling, check the underside of the control panel to ensure it is free of any potential obstructions, meaning any wiring or anything. Just double check your drill point basically up here. And nothing's under here that's going to be harmed during the drill. Well, we didn't have a half inch, so I had to go to our local Ace Hardware and purchase a drill bit. Heavy duty. Make sure it goes through metal. All right, YouTubers, here's what I did. I grabbed a hammer and a screw. I found the exact location I want to drill the hole, and I tapped this screw into the actual panel to give it an indent. And that will not allow my actual drill bit to roam. Look at your switch, come down below and verify that you have clearance on the bottom side. We have this little plate here. We actually had to go just to the left to clear that plate up top. From here, very important, put the tip of the drill bit down in that little indent that you create with your screw and just slowly drill. Do not go fast, just go slow. And apply a little bit of pressure. Not too much pressure because you do not want to actually lose the actual drill bit and allow it to roam.
right, making progress. The hole is drilled. And as you can see, a lot of metal shavings, both on the actual control panel and down below on the ground. Be responsible. Do not leave those there. That would not be good. Go ahead and clean those up and get rid of all those metal shavings. Back to the instructions. Follow the instructions. Read them. Refer to the pictorial image and install your actual switch the exact same way they have it here. All right, YouTubers making progress. And as you can see, our actual washer does encroach on the letters. We could have drilled slightly higher to alleviate that. So keep that in mind. And there's the bottom portion of the switch. Again, just refer to that pictorial image. Position the switch the exact same way. And I used a 15 millimeter socket to tighten this portion here. Now it is time to install hand grips. Important unit and epoxy should be at room temperature during installation and curing, which is great. Our box was inside overnight, so it is room temp. Cut current hand grips off of the handlebar and discard. From here, just carefully make a cut in the handlebar all the way through and hopefully once you make this cut you'll be able to pull these off once you get that cut you can basically just pop these handles right up and off and i'll throw these away i'll do the same thing for this side making progress both old handle grips are removed. Step two, insert one tube cap into each handlebar end. That is what these are. And on this step, you'll need to apply a little bit of force and muscle. Get that in there and then push until it's in. And make sure it is flush, just like that. And you'll do that for both sides. Next, it's epoxy time, and this must be applied to both left and right grips and the grips installed within five minutes because that epoxy will begin to cure within five minutes. So, on the actual epoxy, you have instructions. Step one, remove protective film. Number two, push down on center of the kit to form cup. Number three, mix thoroughly. There's your little mixing stick, and four, apply. And again, we will apply half to the inner portion of each grip. All right, YouTubers, just carefully unpeel the top portion and what you'll do is push down and basically allow the outer gray portion to mix with the inner black epoxy and by pushing down you'll notice the shape it creates a bowl and grab all that exterior gray portion and start mixing it in again you've got five minutes once you apply this it cures pretty fast From here, go ahead and remove the internal wiring. And you wanna add half of the epoxy to one grip and the other grip gets the remaining half. And I'll just kinda of insert it in a circular motion here. Just like that, set that aside. Get the second grip and do the same thing. Back at the handlebars and I'll do the right side first. Insert it and the instructions have you just insert it in a circular motion and that will let the epoxy be evenly distributed. go all the way up just be careful as you turn it try not to harm the electrical wiring at this point both grips are installed and the pictorial image and the instructions very important make sure you position the wiring on the internal portion facing the actual control panel as you can see here back to the instructions important allow epoxy to cure for 24 hours before using the unit very important what I'll do is after we install the harness I'll put this in my heated garage. And now it's time to install wire harness. And let's go and unwrap it. Here's the wire harness. And these will connect to the actual switch. That is our electrical connection point for the headlight. And this goes all the way down by the lower portion of the engine. Refer to the pictorial image and install it. All right, YouTubers, took a couple minutes and routed the entire wiring harness from this connection point here. Zip tied it. Zip tied it here, here, and 
take a look at the actual wire that comes off the actual grip. There's little indents here that they kind of conveniently set in. Come to the bottom side, and as you can see, I've connected that connection point, and then you've got an additional connection point now with the heated grip for the right grip, and you've got your switch, and then on the other side, you've got your actual connection point way back in there as you can see here for your left grip and I zip tied all of that best as I could to make sure none of that wiring harness is going to obstruct or make contact with any moving parts during snow blowing that would not be good so from here we are going to reinsert our spark plug connection point here push in hard until it clips or makes that suction connection next insert your key and again, the instructions say, do not do anything else until 24 hours of carrying is elapsed. So again, what I'll do is go park it in the heated garage. All right, YouTubers, welcome back. It's been 24 hours, a little more actually, about 28. And what we're going to do is start the engine and test the grips. Engine is now running. Verify your light works and turn the switch on. And you may need to wait two to three minutes to allow those grips to warm up. At this point, the engine is shut down. We are going to put it back away in the heated garage and patiently wait for a winter snowy day so we can get the snowblower back out and put it to use. However, definite upgrade with those heated grips. We definitely like them. Hopefully this helps you, YouTubers. And one more thing, in the event that you are interested, we have an entire playlist on working on this Aaron snowblower and having fun with it. So definitely check that out as well. All right, YouTubers, back inside. Hopefully the video helped. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified. You will be able to stay up to date with us. That would be awesome. Thanks again for watching.